recording? Yes, sir. Excellent. All right, so, so today we sort of continue our week's theme of essentially what if I lose control of the spider web? Traditionally, the way it will occur um, is either the elbow going to the floor, which should be prevented by your control, um, or they're going to try to clear the leg in some way and sit up. Sometimes they'll sit up in such a way where they don't clear the legs, but um, that spin under that we worked on on Monday should pretty much handle that. Regardless, then we're going to go over some different options based off of some of the ways you might clear clear this position. So we're going to start today with sort of a little bit of review because we already went over this. Um, Oh, one of these attacks. So I want to just go over this right away. So an option that he might have, uh, on Monday we talked about if he clears this leg, he does big sit up, right? And then uh, follow, catch my screen up there, take it over, do it. Very simple. Very simple. Now, we're going to go back to the, he pushes this leg off of his face in a second. But before we get to that, before we go back to that, I want to talk about what if he pushes this leg off, right? So let's say he pummels under, right? And he's throwing this, right? Now, there's a couple of really simple options for here. Uh, you'll see this, you'll see uh, shown a lot, we'll go back to the cases, where as he pummels under this, they'll get this foot on this side of the head. And then the idea is, is that when he sits up into me, when he sits up into me, right, I go into this triangle, and so on. I'm not a huge fan of this. I'm not a huge fan of this transition to the triangle because number one is it's predicated on the notion that I'm going to catch him in the middle of the thing he's trying to do. So go super slow mo, being like as he shucks, I'm gonna catch it here before he can get it over his head. Which I think if it's fair to say that's not a super reliable metric, like in the sense of if he's trying really hard and he's going to throw that leg over his head really fast, there's a good chance he's going to get to this point right here. Probably faster than I can recognize the situation, process what to do, and then react accordingly. Okay? But let's say I do. The other problem I have here is that fundamentally based on this angle, uh, the only way I can finish this triangle is either by climbing forward and getting to a mounted triangle or basically allowing him to sit up. So really slowly he starts to sit up. The only thing I can really do to finish outside of transitioning right to the arm bar, which you know isn't a bad idea necessarily. None of these, none of these are bad ideas, it's just a little subjective, is I have to wait for him to get to his knees, so then I can start pivoting and really adjusting my angle. So I'm not a huge fan because I feel like it requires a lot of adjustments and a lot of reaction time. Um, what I'd rather do is, as you guys know, let's think of it from the perspective of, he wants this foot here, on this side of his head. Instead of training myself, I mean, how often, how many times do you think I gotta drill that to make that instinct, to make that reaction, you know, immediate, versus if, if I know he's gonna put my foot here, if that's how he's gonna escape, then let's just make that a bad idea, right? And that's my philosophy. Let's make his decision a bad decision. So, Talk about this excellent week one. So slow mo, he throws this leg over, gets here. All I have to do is hook this. That's all I need for my control. As he's sitting up, this other leg is coming over, and I'm catching here. And we have a, what uh, my old teacher used to call the arm bar. That is really good isolation of the elbow. I actually kind of have a choke right here. This is in my legs right there. Um, and then I, you know, just the bite on this arm is. Really profound, really isolated. His elbow is really high into his pocket. So if you guys get myself sort of out of the way of the arm bar, you see like it doesn't take much for me to get the torque to finish. So again, instead of relying on, oh, he's going to, uh, I'm going to catch him in the middle of his transition. Okay, he completes his transition. Right? He throws his leg over, boom, he straps it up and catch. A really strong bite. Again, I can I'm gonna pull my calf backwards like I'm trying to bring my knee to my shoulder. Think of it like I'm gonna try to pull my calf backwards like I'm trying to bring my knee to my shoulder, but while keeping my foot on the floor, and I'm gonna push my knee forward. You get that shape. Pull in. Okay. From here, 
finish with an arm bar, catch the leg, slide out to the wrist, and you can very tight arm bar. A couple of options if this sort of uh, doesn't work out. So we get to the scenario. Number one is, okay, he goes up to this leg. If I manage to hook this and he gets, and he's coming up on top, if I keep going up, like really hard to get him, I spin over, he's right here. So if I have to, for those of you that were here on Monday, I have that transition still by keeping this frame. If I don't get that frame in, <coughs> that's not going to likely work so well. As he goes here, right, because he's getting out of this angle. And that's, this is the fight that I have to prevent from happening. Go ahead and do that one more time. Spin this way. Uh, look, three, two, 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 three. Get here. Once he gets here, I've pretty much lost this arm. Okay? There's some stuff you can do, like, if he pushes this hand really hard trying to get up, go ahead and push hard to get up, because I might catch this. And you'll catch people that way sometimes, like if they're coming out of an arm bar trying to shove you over. But that's starting to get to the beads. And once again, like, okay, if I react accordingly and my instincts are sharp in that transition, then I can catch that. Um, so we kind of show that sort of real time, what that would sort of look like. So I'm here, he shoved the leg over, and as he's coming up, such a block you get Tommy. So that's a, again, you'll catch people with that if you know what to do there. Um, so let's incorporate all three. So number one, he goes under this leg and I hook. In a perfect world, as he sits up, I can kind of freeze him in this pocket. Right, so like, let's see, Right, kind of stiff, stiff down from here. This goes over, I take him down. I can push him full for the choke, and I slide it to the wrist of the arm. So, if, like, let's say he connects his hands all like really tight, and I don't feel like I want to start playing that game, I can start threatening his choke. Look at that. Right. If, for those of you that were here Monday, if I get this wedge, and he managed to sit up before I can get my leg over, my knee is coming over, I'm spinning over, catch him over. <coughs> Again, if you're here on Monday or you know your spinovers, that's cool. If you're not super familiar with that, don't bother with that. That's like a whole thing. And finally, that last one, he gets over the loop really slow. As I'm here, he's going to sit up right. His goal is to get on top. So, relax. so here, so the thing to understand is, as he sits up, right, he's going in this direction. Like, this is the direction his shoulder is pushing to get up on top. So I'm not stopping anything from happening. I'm just, again, making this decision a bad decision. Here, like over. As he goes up, my armpit catches his elbow and I spin. You guys see that? So go back. Pushes, armpit catches his elbow and I spin. From here, I drop. Down, like my, my back finds his lap. I want to cup his elbow, that same groove I keep telling you guys, the same sort of a thumb ridge. And then the finish here is like, I'm not trying to bring his wrist to the ceiling, because that's a lot of, like it's pressure on the shoulder, but the elbows stay where it's at. What I want to do is, I'm, pick, I'm putting pressure, my elbows are pinching tight. Yeah, you feel that makes yeah. difference. My elbows pinch tight, and I scoot my butt away from him. Which is where, like, you can feel like the, the pressure of my armpit on the elbow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, just so Chase can see all that, I'll get you now. So again, first option, we're here, right, you have your hands connected, so you go under this, uh, this leg. Uh, let's say, uh, this guy, right, and you're throwing that over your head, right, so then you'd be trying to sit up and get on top, right? Exactly. Kill it. So you wrap, so my first option, he pummels under this leg, and if I can, as he throws it over, I'm going to hook it. So I sweat sit up. I catch you, it's like you are sitting here. I gotta wedge you in here. <coughs> this foot comes over, I pull down. So the choke is gonna be back. Right? Just knee forward, calf back. From here, let's say you connect hands, right? So that would be like where I would go there, and then work into the hands and get my finish. So that's one. Two, if let's say at this point you do a big sit up, right? So then go and get the double double done, and follow. Boom, catch the knee, take it over, lock that right. Does that make sense, Chase? Yeah. And then the last one, push down. So then you throw that leg over my head, and let's do this one really slow up. As you're trying to come up to like side control, is I'm catching here. 
food. Double up on the thumb, and then again, I'm not trying to just lift the wrist. You feel I'm just kind of extending your shoulder, basically. I want to pinch tight and drive my hips down. So I'm like sliding my hips along the floor. Does that make sense, guys? Excellent. Partner up, workout. One, two, three.